Poorly acted scenes in motion pictures aren't hard to find. Questionable acting chops demonstrated by television stars, on the other hand, can get buried a little deeper among the thousands of hours of TV broadcast every day. But fear not, fans of the small screen, we've screened more than 50 years of TV history to put together this retrospective of cringeworthy clips. We guarantee your gratification from these painfully poor performances. A Frightful Fight Legendary television screenwriter and producer Gene Roddenberry created one of the most memorable shows in history with the futuristic science fiction series Star Trek. Unfortunately, lead actor William Shatner, playing USS Enterprise Captain James T. Kirk, often boldly went where no bad acting had ever gone before. Shatner may be a sci-fi icon, but he set acting back eons with this painful-to-watch fight sequence. Even famed American astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson weighed in on what's commonly referred to as the worst fight scene ever. I thought even by then, they could have been more creative in what they imagine an alien to look like. Fortunately, this scene wasn't the Space Explorer's final frontier. The original series aired for three seasons, spinning off into an entire multi-million dollar franchise, proving that Star Trek wasn't just here today, gone tomorrow. Oh, not again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Nose Knows Bad Acting Sticking with fight scenes that leave you feeling queasy, martial arts maverick Chuck Norris was known for dialing up some stomach-curdling doozies on his 90s CBS show Walker, Texas Ranger. None were more unappetizing than this front porch frenzy. But you're going to jail. No way! No more jail! Never! A show known for its awful brawls, all of those bouts surely bow down to this disaster. Chuck Norris jokes aside, Horrendous dialogue and tone-deaf acting often turned his eight-season-long primetime drama into pure comedy gold. The bad guys in this fight scene will testify to it. Let me see. You broke my nose! I'll fix it. <laughs> Baby on board. Talking about painful, there's no other way to describe the tragically lifeless first foray into acting by Bristol Palin, daughter of former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. If you look closely, you might even see her cue cards. I couldn't find the school. I came by yesterday morning at 9 to go with you. Oh, I was out by 7. I left you a note on the door last night, but I see it's still there. Two years after her own teen pregnancy saga was revealed, Bristol got the acting bug. She appeared in an episode of ABC Family series, A Secret Life of the American Teenager. It's for teen moms. So I didn't get here on my own? Of course you did. You're the world's greatest French horn player, and I'm Yo-Yo Ma. Palin's awkward cameo apparently was a one-time acting gig, as she told E! Online, I'm not an actress. I'll leave that up to the experts, but I had a great time here. I don't think I'll be doing any more acting in the future. Yeah, good idea. Good night, sweet kitty. In the next scene, it's not even humans doing the dirty work. This time, ferocious felines took their faulty starring turn on an episode of NBC's a short-lived 1983 series, Manimal. Just like these poorly edited cats, viewers turned tail and ran to another channel. Television audiences didn't bite, and Manimal was one of the most infamous TV flops of the decade. Powerless Punch Bad acting, racially insensitive plotlines, and largely uninspired fight sequences gave critics enough ammo to give Iron Fist first season a resounding thumbs down. Game of Thrones veteran Finn Jones played Iron Fist's lead, the conflicted martial arts expert Danny Rand. Go slow. At the beginning. Critics said the overacting sensei was played with cheesy lines and clueless, slow-paced martial arts moves. Despite abysmal reviews for its first run, loyal Marvel fans will get more of the man with the glowing right hand as Iron Fist started filming Season 2 in December 2017. Another Marvel misstep Originally intended for a late 2018 movie release, Marvel's Inhumans franchise was instead hastily pushed into television production in 2016. The last-minute rush to air reflected in the show's boring sets and bland lack of character development. Really? 
You didn't want to be king, you just had to be king. It's clear here acting throughout the series suffered too, especially courtesy of lead character Black Bolt. Since Bolt is mute and only communicates with abbreviated sign language, head nods, and eye rolls, dialogue in the show is played with uncomfortably long silent pauses. The Daily Beast summed up in humans succinctly, writing, This is, simply put, the worst thing to debut on TV this fall, and the worst disaster that Mary Marvel has managed to cook up. We can think of worse Marvel things, but close enough. She's so excited. Whether giving us silver screen sludge and showgirls all overacting away on the small screen, Saved by the Bell veteran Elizabeth Berkeley has proven she's a princess of pitiful performances. Playing stressed out straight A student Jetty Spano, Berkeley wore her crown with pride. I'm so excited! I'm so <laughs> scared! The much mocked scene stands out as the most memorable in Saved by the Bell's run, yet it was almost left on the cutting room floor. The original script called for Jesse to actually get addicted to speed, but NBC execs wouldn't allow mentioning the drug. The network eventually okayed Spano's storyline to switch from an addiction to speed to a caffeine pill addiction, and Jesse's song, as well as Berkeley's infamous acting, lived on. I'm so excited! <laughs> Stick to the dancing. Sometimes acting is so ridiculously over the top that it actually becomes good again. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go, keep the change. Hi, doggy. We present the case of Alfonso Ribeiro. If you tap danced on Broadway as a child and then moonwalked alongside the legendary Michael Jackson in a famous Pepsi commercial, it's safe to say you can hold your own as an accomplished dancer. But when Ribeiro made his transition into television acting, some critics said he had two left feet. Crompton. Man, listen, my date with Lisa didn't quite turn out the way I planned. Pray tell, why not? Ribeiro landed his signature TV role as Colton Banks in 1990 on NBC's The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Colton had a share of funny moments, but in this scene, Ribeiro took Colton's character over the top like few actors ever have. Luckily for television viewers, Ribeiro returned to his dancing roots and his hilarious Colton moves, winning the 19th season of Dancing with the Stars. But really, it doesn't get better than this. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.